Welcome back to Upgrade to General, a series to help you upgrade your amateur radio license to general class. This episode is sub-element G9, question group D, and I'm your host, Ron Call, KE7CR. This question group is more about antennas and feed lines, specialized antenna types. The first question asks, which of the following antenna types will be most effective as a near vertical incident sky wave, or NVIS, antenna, for short skip communications on 40 meters during the day. NVIS, that's where you bounce a radio signal, HF, up into the ionosphere, the ionosphere refracts it or reflects it back down, and you wanna go almost straight up and straight down. I use this all the time. I live about a half hour away from my dad, so when I bounce it up, it comes almost straight back down, and we want reliable communications. So we use 40 meter NVIS all the time during the day. This illustration shows the basic radiation patterns for a horizontal dipole and a vertical dipole. Now they're three-dimensional plots, so you can kind of see how for a, a dipole, the radiation radiates away, kind of in a donut shape around the antenna. Now if it's a horizontal antenna, it's going to look like a tire running on the road. If it's a vertical antenna, it's going to look like that tire tipped over on the ground. So what this shows is the basic radiation pattern for a vertical, you're going to have a lower takeoff angle. For a horizontal, it's going to radiate to the ground and up in the air more, especially if that horizontal dipole is closer to the ground, that, that radiation is going to bounce off the ground and bounce back up and either cancel out or reinforce the radiation going up into the air. So if, imagine if we turn that antenna towards you, so you're looking at the antenna end on then for a horizontal dipole, this is what the radiation patterns look like end on, and they depend on the height. Because if it's closer to the ground, more of that radiation is going to bounce off the ground and then reinforce the radiation going up. Imagine that you have the dipole one-eighth wavelength high up in the air. This is going to be your radiation pattern that's shown on the left. Not quite a, a circle. It's going to be a little bit elliptical, but almost a circle. You're going to get most of that radiation going up, bouncing straight off above you from the ionosphere. A quarter wavelength high, it's a little more flattened out. More of the radiation is going to the sides instead of straight up. At a half wavelength high, notice how you get two lobes, 30 degrees or so. And at one wavelength high, you get multiple lobes, some of them lower angle, some of them higher angle. So if you want most of your radiation to go pretty much straight up and then bounce off the ionosphere, come straight back down, or go with a height for a horizontal dipole that's placed between one-tenth of a wavelength and one-fourth of a wavelength above the ground. So that's the answer. The next question asks, what is the feed point impedance of an end-fed half-wave antenna? The end-fed half-wave antennas have a very high feed point impedance. You have to have some kind of a, a ballon or a unin of some, or some kind of match to match your output uh, impedance from your transceiver and from the feed line to your antenna. It's going to have a very high feed point impedance. The next question asks, in which direction is the maximum radiation from a VHF UHF halo antenna? This diagram shows a halo antenna. Halo antenna is essentially, it's pretty much like a small loop antenna. And the radiation for both a small loop antenna and a halo antenna is in the same plane as the loop. So you might use a halo antenna like it shows here on, on a vehicle. The radiation pattern shows, again, the X, Y coordinates and then the Z axis going up. You have hardly any radiation going perpendicular to the plane of the loop. Instead, most of the radiation is in the plane of the loop. So the answer is omnidirectional in the plane of the halo. The next question asks, what is the primary function of antenna traps? Well, antenna traps are used on a lot of vertical antennas because vertical antennas are difficult to make them super tall. And what a trap is, is a resonant LC circuit that's used in parallel to isolate different sections of the antenna. So this allows you to do multiple bands with the same antenna instead of cutting each antenna to the pr appropriate length for a separate band. So the answer is to enable multi-band operation. Next question asks, what is an advantage of vertically stacking horizontally polarized Yagi antennas? Again, a Yagi antenna is a good directional antenna. If you stack one Yagi antenna on top of another, maybe on top of a third, 
what it does is narrows the main lobe in elevation. So it's very directional. So the answer is it narrows the main lobe in elevation. The next question asks, which of the following is an advantage of a log periodic antenna? A log periodic antenna, the spacing of the elements along the boom and the lengths of the elements follow a logarithmic function. Now a log periodic antenna, you can think of it as similar to a Yagi antenna, but think of it as multiple Yagi antennas at different frequencies or multiple Yagi antennas at different bands. So you're going to have different lengths of the elements at different distances along the boom. So this picture illustrates a log periodic antenna. And the main advantage is wide bandwidth. It's like having several Yagi antennas, but in different bands, all on the same boom. So the advantage is wide bandwidth. The next question asks which of the following describes a log periodic antenna. And the answer is element length and spacing vary logarithmically along the boom. The next question asks, how does a screwdriver mobile antenna adjust its feed point impedance? So here's some illustrations of screwdriver type antennas. They're, they're vertical antennas. People might attach one of these to their vehicle. The way it works is there's a decoupler that can be moved up or down a coil. So as this radiating coil is part of the antenna, and depending on where that decoupler attaches to the coil, you're going to change the impedance and affect the frequency that it radiates best on. So a screwdriver antenna adjusts its feed point impedance by varying the base loading inductance. The next question asks, what is the primary use of a beverage antenna? Well, a beverage antenna is used just for receiving. It's a receive-only antenna. The primary use of a beverage antenna, the answer is directional receiving for MF and low HF bands. The next question asks, in which direction or directions does an electrically small loop, less than a tenth of a wavelength in circumference, have nulls in its radiation pattern? Well, a small loop antenna is very similar to the halo antenna. It's going to have nulls broadside to the loop. Most of the radiation is going to be in the plane of the loop, not broadside to the loop. The next question asks, which of the following is a disadvantage of multiband antennas? One of the problems of a multiband antenna is you're going to try to receive and transmit at multiple different frequencies, multiple different bands, and so they tend to have poor harmonic rejection. That's the answer. They have poor harmonic rejection. The last question asks, what is a common name of a dipole with a single central support? You see it like this, where you have one leg of the dipole maybe angled down this direction, the other leg angled this opposite direction, and the center part is supported by this mast. It's an easy way to mount an antenna. It looks like the letter V, but it's upside down, so they're called an inverted V. All right, that's it for this question set. Thanks for joining me. Hope you learned something, and we'll see you with the next question set. This is KE7CR73.